Good evening, this is the Lion of Legend, and tonight we're going to get right back into a love of my follower count. It's been a while, so I wonder if I remember where we left off. Alright, so we do have our own shrine now. Where do we want to put points? Perhaps, maybe compassion, and we'll do arts and culture. Wait, we can summon minions now. You have successfully summoned some minions. Whatever that does. It's not easy to pay attention to other matters when you have an ominously ticking sense of impending doom as a background process. But as wise humans with stellar mental health say, even if you have a very important deadline, you shouldn't forget to eat, sleep, or take regular showers. So as you prepare, life goes on. Director's Cut Follow-Up A new weapon of mass destruction. Famous film director releases a movie so good, we can't stop watching. Literally. Please help. And other interesting news. You infinite jested superhero movies. Maybe. Please revoke it before humanity goes extinct. Weekday routine. Impending doom is on the way. I think I recall like Cthulhu is coming or something like that. So, perhaps we need to be ready for that. So, mortgages can be packed into bonds and sold. Basically, you lend some people money, they promise to pay you back, so you pack their promises into packages and sell promises to others. What can possibly go wrong, you wonder? Oh boy. What is this Eldritch God about to get into? Um, let's talk to Theodore. Another movie. Week 30, Monster Hunter. The doors are blasted open, which is fine. Cthulhu wouldn't enter by normal means, and everyone else is not in priority list right now. Oh yeah, and gods of this realm also don't bother to enter through doors like civilized beings. Hi, kinda busy here. Be quick or consider rescheduling if not urgent. A person with a giant ass golden crest shaped shotgun points the said shotgun at you. Oh come on, was I really that rude? I apologize, but I really have a lot on my plate right now. I have been told this is a demon lair. I came to fight and free this place from their unholy presence. Bite me. Bite me. The wannabe demon slayer raises their gun. What a nuisance. Um. Well, maybe I can reason with him. Theodore. Hey. Hey, Theo. Coming, coming. What's up? Please argue on my behalf. This hunter thinks I'm a demon. Okay, what are we arguing for? He looks at the guest, examining their weaponry. Whether the proper sign of the cross is either two or three fingers touching, my patron deity is Basilicus Solus. Hope I said that right. Why the cross-shaped pea shooter then? Balance. But your aura doesn't feel... benevolent. Is this a trick? Theo? Please. Alright, alright. Hey, demon or not, a coin won't attack you first. Can we put our weapons away for a second and talk? Why shouldn't I attack? Hmm, let's see. Hard question, really. You already came here with a predisposition that here be demons, enemies of mankind. But can you take a deep breath and set this belief aside for a second? What if there are mind-altering smokes in the air? Okay, don't breathe. Focus on me. Run on diagnostic tests, if you'd like. Now, do I happen to be possessed? 
The wannabe demon slayer silently reaches for their pockets. From there, they extract a bottle of water and immediately splashes said water all over Theodore's face. Is that holy water? If you are a decent person, you will pay for my laundry. This doesn't provide distinctive proof. You might be a half-demon. I am just a mortal being, and you are overcomplicating things because you don't want to be wrong. Give me that damned bottle, you're not getting it back. And when Theodore reaches out to the hunter, their fingers brush against each other. Something shifts in the air. This is a classic calling for a comms razor problem, though. Have you ever heard anything about half-demons being immune to holy water? As a matter of fact, I have. I fought some myself. But you are not a demon, I can see that. I mean, I am glad to hear that. But what changed your mind, if not water, then? Two things. First, most demons despise civilization and will not engage in philosophy. Who knows? Maybe I'm a special evolved half-demon who learned to hide this obvious weakness. Yes, plausible. I'll leave the second for you to figure out yourself. Peace. Alrighty. Um, I'll do compassion. Let's get these to 40, I guess. Weekend activities. Post on social media. Now that you have a donation button, and one more donation button plus a regular subscription, you can get both prestige and prosperity points from being angry at Japanese cartoons. I think that's what happened last time. Week 31, did you just punch out Cthulhu? Oh, hello Cthulhu. I believe this is the first time we've looked at one another. I am not going to bother trying to read this text. Cthulhu's disgusting tentacles rip through the fabric of reality, and in your ears, there is a cry, the Divine Order, pleading to you for protection. Oh, how long I have dreamed of this exact moment. Alright, civilians are to leave the perimeter, just and below and so on. Here comes the man of the hour, my second least favorite relative. The deep sea sends soldiers, amorphous, pulsating creatures of no concise form and shape, semi-sentient and shrieking. Shagaths, under the command of Cthulhu, they too grow tentacles, oozing with a secret of color unlike any seen on Earth. But the Shagaths are not sapient, in a sense. They are like animals who can be tamed and trained, like warrior horses or hunting falcons. Unlike horses and falcons, they are symbiotic beings. They need a master to have a form. Your Shagaths just so happen to adopt a shape of a common house cat. Through the wound of reality, Cthulhu emerges in all of his slimy, i.e. unthinkable alien glory. For natural inhabitants of the human realm, it must hurt just to look at him. Traitorous fool. Oh, I can actually read that one. How dare you disobey the will of outer gods. You feel an oncoming headache. How ironic it is being rejected by both the Divine Order and the Abyss. Fuck them both. Let me demonstrate how. From where you draw your strength, oh the god of... Hmm. From where you... Oh. Well, I think I'm stronger than the Divine. We'll do the Divine. Godlike abomination your cousin dearest might be, he stepped foot in this realm. The Divine Order fights him too, and what he represents here, impossible, the unknowable, an existential threat. What can you even do in the face of a greater horror, the one who was there when time and space did not yet exist? The undeath won't save you against the ones who do not know neither death nor drive. The void is uncaring nothingness of which they too came from. The tentacles rush forward, 
writhing in discordance. They curl around you, squashing and crushing. Only I decide who can and cannot die. Oh, hello, Death. With blurry vision, you see Death approaching, silent and inevitable. He really dislikes theatrics, you think. And everything goes black. Week 33. Ethics 101. Should I lose? Oh, hi, welcome back. Are you alright? Mostly. My ego is bruised, though. So what happened then? Well, as you said, I saw you losing. Ouch. And called death. Well, to be extra sure he would answer my call, I also slaughtered a lamb. It was really, really uncomfortable. Then death peered, punched Cthulhu, and told me the whole lamb slaughtering was a very touching and polite thing to do. Said he really appreciated it. Apparently, he gets offerings extremely rarely, and most of them are filled with ill intent. Think mass murders. Those are basically the only people who sing in his name. Anyway, then he kind of saved you from falling, in Princess Carrie fashion, and disappeared. I think that's all there was to it. Hmm. This is so embarrassing. But you're alive and well, and Cthulhu is successfully banished. I call that a win-win. A small price, I know. Thank you for being my priest and everything. Are you firing me? You did call for death, so you had to renounce me. And I have enough understanding of gratitude and self-preservation to avoid stealing worshippers from another deity, especially one who saved me from some big trouble. Oh, for the love of, I am not property, and death is not an asshole, so could you please hire me back? You are not exactly sure what to feel ashamed of, but think you do have to feel ashamed right now. Besides, it wasn't my ritual sustaining your residency here. Fair. Weekday routine. Alright, so I guess we are not firing Theodore. Um... Hmm. Soul navigation. They were the oldest, but they weren't awakened for a long time. Gods from cosmos, time and space. Weekend activities. Well, we'll summon the minions again. Week 34. Ethics 102 follow-up. Hey, Death. Do you hear me? You don't expect him to show up. What do you want? But he does. Now that everything's back to normal, the sense of mild antagonism between you returns as well. But you're not an animal that acts on gut feelings. I'm sorry for disliking you. You are lying. No. I sincerely would have liked not to dislike you so much. Out of gratitude, if anything. Hm. <laughs> We are supposed to dislike each other on a conceptual level. You don't need to apologize. I also dislike you, and probably will dislike you forever. What a nice civilized discussion, you think. Why did you even bother? But, I also respect you now. These feelings are not mutually exclusive. You're weird. Tell me about it. You're the one who won't leave souls alone and let them move on in peace. Excuse me? If they have a nice thing going on, you're the one who interrupts their party, just like an over-controlling parent who forces everyone to go to bed early. But they have to move on. You can't live in the past. So instead, should you stop living? Death is an ending as much one wants it to be. There is something comforting in arguing with death. No matter what happens next, you can always count on him rejecting what you stand for. Weekday routine. I feel like there's a lot of... I mean, I guess, uh, kind of obvious, but there's a lot of philosophy in this game. And, of course, uh, you know, your priest here 
is a philosophy instructor, so that kind of lines up. Um, insight. I imagine eventually I'm going to have to deal with death. Question is when. Minor deities, reputation, okay. Week 35, Demon Wars. You look at your own altar with the displeasure of a god, on whose sacred object someone left a message. The message in question reads, Reported drastically increased demonic activity. Code Red Emergency Pantheon Assembly. Be present. And take your mortal with you. They could have emailed. What are demons exactly? Fallen angels? What are angels then? That's an interesting observation. There aren't any angels. Or are there? Weekday routine. Okay. Even though they're called demons, technically those evil beings are too gods. Gods from sin. Alright. Um... Another movie night. Let me save real quick. And let's return. Week 36, Demon Wars. The heavens are crowded in a way you've never felt before, even though there's almost no one to see with the bare eye. Oh, this is Bas Basilica Solus. Please assume the incorporeal form upon arrival. And don't block the gates. Thank you. Sorry. And what's this all about? War. We will explain in a bit. Mortal guests, potential demigods, and those unable to assume incorporeal forms for any other reason shall take seats in Sector 7, Cloud 9. Cloud 9 is moist and stiff. Not the best chair you've had. You quickly look around. There are some mortals, unknown deities, and a familiar flying spaghetti monster floating around. Meatballs, anyone? You're a flying blob of pasta with ketchup. Your point being? Pasta with ketchup. Okay. Just wondering if your divine specialty is hating Italy. All set? Good. Now, in the name of the Pantheon, I, Basilicus Solus, declare the meeting to be now in session. Border Patrol have reported attacks on the human realm by the demons. Mostly possessions. Any influenced humans are going berserk. Mostly notable outbreaks spotted in areas of both developed and developing countries. Reasons of correlation currently unknown. Treatment currently unknown. All gods with suitable domains are to split in groups by the regional worship principle. Delay your expansionist ideas for now. If you're mainly worshipped in a specific area, focus on it. If your domain is not suited for combat, focus on strengthening beliefs of your flocks. As per report of the Goddess of Knowledge, mortals with strong convictions are more immune to possessions. Chaos ensues. Divine beings, gods and goddesses, bounce around in kind of a... Brownie in motion. Demons? We haven't heard from them since the Age of Reason. Oh, no, 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 not the Baroque again. I don't care if North America is my primary source of power. I want Asian. Kai Shen, god of money and trade. <laughs> oh, how fitting. Is there a traitor amongst us? You know, I have no idea what I am supposed to be doing here. Basilicus Solus finishes his speech and descends to where you sit. You can fight, so go and fight. Really? Yes, good luck. Weekday routine. Okay, I don't know what the heck is like going on, but... Here we are. War. 
Human biology is so primitive, it's sad. Whoever that Schrodinger's cat is, he's a huge douche. You're not jealous. Weekend activities. I'll socialize. Okay. Reputation. Demon Wars. Wow. The city is on fire. You see people running around, screaming, fighting, eating off the ground, and other unsightly things. But you don't sense people. Ah, uh, is, that, is that a scream? <laughs> oh, my voice acting is so good. You see a familiar figure. Oh, the blockchain kid. He doesn't react. He keeps running straight at you. Is he about to headbutt us? Before the kid has any chance to do such thing, you catch him by the shoulders. Is this another free will thing? He doesn't reply. You take a closer look at him. The pupils in his eyes are vertical, and when you touch his shadow, his mind feels altered to be outside of your reach. I think we have just witnessed the demonic possession. Grrr. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yes, my voice acting. Can you do something about it? Um. Hmm. <laughs> Question the morality of non consensual divine influence. I don't know. I think this is, uh, this is probably okay to step in, right? Be sure his memories, his aspirations. Well, the god, the sun god mentioned um, strong conviction can mitigate against possession. So let's go for his aspirations. You dive deeper into the shadow, into the soul of the kid. To your surprise, there is no mind, only instinct. He. His mind is not human anymore. What do you mean, not human? In his mind, there's no humanity. How can this be? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? This is a ridiculous situation. You're arguing in the middle of a burning street, and in your hands there's a bratty teenager who just lost his soul. That means I don't know. If you know something I don't, you're free to take a look yourself. And how, pray tell, am I supposed to do that? Ugh, let me show you. Handing a growling kid with one hand, you grab Theodore's hand with another and share. See, there is no language, no sense of self, and no comprehension of time. All things that make sapient beings. Wait, wait, I think it's just a surface, as if... He forgot what being human is. Can you try again, please? Well, perhaps I should have reached for his memories. You focus and summon all your power, trying to reach something, anything, and you find it. Almost erased, but not by mere fear, by justified existential anxiety. There is a remnant of the soul. You catch it, holding it close like one would create a little child. It's alright, you whisper. Think of the joy you had when you won your local League of Legends tournament. Think of the Pokemon cards you loved collecting as a kid. Of course, it's a shame your younger siblings can't relate to why those tiny pieces of paper are such treasure, but I can. Pokemon cards. Huh. You heard all that. Yes, yes I did. You patiently wait as the kid regains consciousness. Where... where am I? Still here on planet Earth. Don't give up on it, alright? You sigh. There is a whole city of possessed humans, so you have a whole lot more to do. Weekday routine. Uh, we'll go, since maybe soul navigation will help here. Weekend activities. I'm gonna save. 
And let's do... I don't know, some more minions. Week 38. It turns out to be the hardest thing you've ever done before. Healing mortals afflicted with demonic possession. But you continue to walk around town and try your damned best. There is something fundamentally wrong with demons. No wonder the Pantheon declares unity in the face of a demonic threat. Therapy. Will it end eventually? Or are we about to enter the post-apocalypse? How do you feel? I guess, weird. It's like I'm missing something. Well, I suppose that's normal. This is quite the catastrophe. It would be more surprising if you didn't feel any mental toll in your psyche. The market is about to have an insane demand for PTSD therapies. Uh, let's see. We'll do humanities and compassion. After a major clusterfuck that was, the whole mortgage bond situation, they did call for more regulation. From whom, though, do they have, like, a banking deity? You've never heard of them. Slays around. The right to rest. And where is your mortal friend? I'm not a monster. I sent him home. Divine wars are not a place for humans. Even if Basilicus Solus told him to fight? You shrug. Basilicus Solus and the Divine Order are not my employer. Why are you chilling around instead of fighting? Because I am also not a monster, Akoit. I offer souls rest in peace. But demonic possessions destroy the soul now, doesn't it? It can be reversed. But I can't help with that. Death offers no meaning to live. If the possessed die like that, they lose any chance of the afterlife. So as long as the possession can be healed, I won't interfere. Do what you need to do, and thank you for doing it. The Divine Order won't ever recognize you, and neither will the Abyss. But death offers you his gratitude, as merciful as he is. Weekday Routine Do humanities insights. Turns out there's no banking deity, so they try to regulate themselves. Weekend activities. Let's uh, talk to Theodore. Week 40. The war continues, and then it ends. Firefighters take out their discharge hoses, and usual life slowly resumes. Weekday routine. We'll go in the divine order. And of course, there are gods from flesh, ascended mortals. Barely anyone remembers it now, but the main purpose of the Pantheon was to unite against the demons, to cast differences aside in the face of an existential threat. Both the heavens and the hell are sub-realms of the human realm, parts of the whole an interconnected set. Some more minions. Am I gonna have some, like, army by the end of this game or something? What are you going to do now? Favors and finals. That reminds me, Theo. What did you want? Right now, breakfast. Grapefruit and prosetto. Yeah, that sounds good. No, I mean... Our contract is about to end. What divine favor did you want to ask from Yog sagoth Would you believe me if I told you that I really can't remember? You say nothing. He doesn't remember. Well, that's quite interesting. Insight and compassion. Weekend activities.
where the gods go to die. Even though it's supposed to be the end, you are not going anywhere. The Divine Order recognized you, so you stay. And then, life goes on. After all, you have the best priest the god can ask for, so it's all neat and cool. Even if it will end one day, that is not today. What happens to gods throughout eternity? They, you, are admired and worshipped, loved and praised, until humanity changes so much, and they leave old deities behind. Then you fade into obscurity and disappear, which is not sad, not sad at all. The end. Wait, what? That's it? Whoa. That's all? Really? I was accepted by a divine order and that's, that's it? Uh, well. I guess that is my story. Um, there's multiple endings. Wait a minute. You have become your domain. So is that like the good ending? One, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness, look at all these endings. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get all these. Maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, well, for my at least first playthrough, I should say, I really did enjoy the overall story. I kind of wish there was a little bit more that I could see, but I guess that requires me to start over. So, it is what it is. Hey, I really like the characters here. I thought the dialogue was great. Yeah, I guess I did what I, you know, came here to do, or I did what a Quoit came here to do, because, you know, I've become my domain, I guess. I guess it's a good thing, right? I don't know. Anyways, overall... I'll post the link where you can get this game yourself, as I usually do, and uh, you can give it a roll yourself. That being said, if you like this overall series, go ahead and give this video a like, leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Feel free to share and subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, this is the Lion of Legend. Y'all have a great night.